Hello, my name is Chad Chance and I'm here today to talk about the Double S line of raining plates. It's distributed solely by Delta Mustad in North America. Here at the Anvil, I have three examples of the Double S line of raining plates. I have the 7 8 inch plate. It's quarter inch thick, 7 8 of an inch wide. I have the 1 inch plate. It's quarter inch, 1 inch. And the inch and a quarter. It's again one quarter of an inch thick, inch and a quarter in the toe, and has a slight taper to the heels. This particular shoe is one inch in the toe, has a slight taper, and it's punched for a Mustad four and a half race. This nail snaps right in, right up to the chamfer, so there's very little excess material to remove. Another characteristic of the double S plate is they all come standard with a rocker toe. On the back, it will have the style of the reining plate as well as the size. This particular one is a model L and, it's, and it has the number 12. And what that means is 12 inches from heel to heel when this shoe is in the straight. The exact same size would be for a number two. When you're looking at these plates on the shelf, one might think that these are punched somewhat coarse. But shoeing in Texas, for many years I used them on predominantly quarter horses and what I've found is that the nail placement and the nail size work perfectly and I'm going to show you why. Is if you draw a foot on this shoe, this shoe is not designed for perimeter fit. Your shoe is going to fit somewhere in this area here. If you go to the buttress, say this will be your inside buttress, you'll come out, you'll catch your quarter and your shoe will come around and you'll have some of the shoe sticking on the outside so as you can see and you could box this off so the horse doesn't step on it or whatever you need to do but on the front half of the foot I really never found it to be that big of an issue but if the edge of your foot is here now you can see it gives you that distance to get your nails in the right place and I think the nail placement for these being up in the front half of the foot are one of the great characteristics of this shoe. The rocker toe comes standard in these double S reining plates. But even though it comes standard, it doesn't mean that you have to apply this shoe with a rocker toe. The rocker toe is easy to hammer out. Now I'm going to address the back half of these double S reining plates. And what I mean by that is as you can see, I drew the buttress of the heels on each side. But with my experience of shoeing reiners over 25 years, the where horses step on these in the cross ties and the wash rack or is in this area right here or just out or in their turnarounds this area right in here I always address over the horn before I apply these to the feet and what I do is as you can see they're open because the dirt needs to travel through the plate and out the back of the this horseshoe so um, the center of the heel is right here and what I want to do is forge the center of this heel over towards the inside so it meets up with the center of the buttress. So basically what I'm going to do is just forge this over the horn, push this where it kind of donkeys out, push this over to the inside. And then you can box this on your grinder uh, or rasp it, whatever you want to do. And it will make a smooth transition from the wall or the buttress of this heel through the inside and then around the foot. Okay, I'm going to come out on my shaping heat. And what I want to do is take that little bit of flare or donkey off of the end. And so what you do is you have to make sure that there's distance between where I'm trying to push and the horn of my anvil. And I just lightly come across and come over and it's completely out. And as you can see right here, this side comes around and this side is still out. But if you're working in a gas fire and you heat both heels up, you should be able to do this process in one heat. So I'll take the other side, come here, after the two shoe modifications that I do on this double S plate, the first one being take the rocker out of the toe and then address the back half of the foot taking um, that point of the heel over to center. As you can see in this shot, this is my inside and this is my outside. 
And what I've done is I've tightened the inside up just slightly more so the horse doesn't step on it in the turnarounds or whether he's in the wash rack or anything like that. And, uh, and I also ground this shoe and I opened up the checks just a small amount. That way, as the dirt travels through this shoe, it still has a wide open area in the back half of the shoe to release the dirt and not to hinder the horse's stop. We're gonna walk this horse again and I want you to pay attention and watch how the right hind lands. This horse spreads more on the right than the left. You can see when he hits the ground, his toes pointing way to the outside. As you can see, this foot points outside the horse's front knee. So when it stops, that will be the direction that it will slide. Looking at a lateral view of this foot, one of the things that I'm gonna address is try to stand him up get his hock locked in so there's no lateral movement. Now that I've got this right hind trimmed, you can see the difference in the heel height between the right and the left. Now I'll trim the left and try to even these two feet up. Okay, once I've cleaned this foot up and I've got it just nipped, you can see there's some damage in the back half of this foot on the heels. And so this is the first time we've done this horse, so I don't know exactly what's going on, but I'm gonna stand this horse up by taking this down, because as it's already folded over, it's not gonna be able to handle any weight bearing on this compromised area. So I'm gonna try to take this heel down till I get strong tubules. And then what I'll do is where the wall is so thick in the toe and in this area here, I'll just gather that foot up to help bring the foot back underneath the limb. But as you can see now, we have uniform hoof wall all the way around the foot and we have a hind shape. Once I've got the foot trimmed, now I'm gonna move on to the shoe selection. This horse is going to go to a lot of big shows here in the near future, so we're going to put an inch and a quarter uh, toe weight on there. All right, what I'm going to do to get started on these plates is I'm going to mark the lateral branch on both of them. Just going to take a center punch and lightly mark the outside branch on both shoes. Then the right hind shoe, which is this one, we're going to have to shape slightly different than the left because this horse spreads more on his right hind than his left hind. So this being the outside, I'm flipping the shoe over, okay? What I'm gonna do, the first thing is I'm gonna knock the rocker toe out of this shoe because on this particular horse, I do not need it. And then I'm gonna leave the medial toe this full because I do not want the medial toe when the horse stops to descend into the ground because if it does, it's gonna cause the horse to spread. Then I'm going to forge the medial heel to put a radius in it and push the center of this branch over to the middle because this area right here is where a lot of rainers step on plates and pull them off. So I wanna push this over, but I do not wanna go underneath the foot. Then on the outside, I'm gonna take about 3 eighths of an inch off of length Therefore, this, this shoe will set on the foot and it will be longer medially than laterally. So we'll put them in the forge and in two heats, we'll have them ready to go to the horse. So it just takes a real light heat and you can see how the set toe or the rocker toes in this shoe and I'll just lightly take my hammer and flatten it out. You wanna turn it over on this side and now get the sole pressure out. The next step is I'll put this shoe in and work on the medial branch and the lateral branch in the same heat and go to the, to the horse and get it fit up. All right, I'm gonna work on my medial branch first. We have a great radius here, so I just wanna match the front half and the back half together. So my shoe is off the horn. I don't wanna smash the section. I'm dropping my tong hand, just bringing it on around. You can see with one quick pass the difference in the shape of the medial and the lateral branch of the shoe. 
So what I'm going to do is quickly turn it over while I have the heat. In the lateral branch where the quarter is, on the horizon of the horn, I just start pushing it down, dropping my tong hands, sweeping this plate around. One thing about these shoes, they're quarter by inch and a quarter. So it doesn't take a lot of hard blows to move these where you want. Okay, this is the lateral branch and it comes around this radius and here and this little bit of flare that I've left on the back side, I'm taking three eighths of an inch of that off with my grinder so I'm not too worried about that. But the medial branch, this radius and this radius match. So if I get my width correct, I'm almost positive one trip to the horse and this shoe will fit. Okay, once I've got this shoe ground up and ready to nail, you can see I got my checks in the right spot. My medial branch is about three eighths of an inch longer than my lateral branch. It's important that we get this shoe positioned in the right place because I want a full medial toe. I boxed it off so he can't stand on it, but we need to make sure that the positioning of this shoe stays while we put a couple nails in. After getting a couple nails in the plate, you can see how that we're full on the medial toe and that'll help keep this horse from spreading. As you can see from this angle, our shoes turned on the foot just slightly. This uh, Mustad four and a half race nail seats into this uh, double S plate real nicely. There's not much to rasp off. Our checks are in the right spot. We're just just a slightly longer medially. The radiuses of our shoe balances foot up real nice. Now we'll finish it up. Okay, now we're on the right hind. And uh, you can see I got the shoe turned slightly to the inside. Our checks match up beautifully. Now we got the shoe nailed on. We'll just block it up and finish the foot. What I want to try to do is just even up the top of these clinches. And then I, I like to use a uh, double S clinching gouge. I just go right underneath the nail. Take a little piece out. And then take my clincher. And these are a small nail. They're a four and a half race. So you don't have to squeeze really hard. Just bend, pull back into the foot. Bend over, pull back into the foot. And there's our finished product. Gouge a little bit of hoof wall out from underneath the nail where you want the clinch to set. Now we're finished with the foot. We got it clinched. You can see how much of the plate is out in front of the foot and in the medial toe. It's boxed off heavily in the medial toe so it's it looks less from the top side than it actually is. But it squared the foot underneath this leg. When we first showed it, it was way outside of the knee, and now it's right down the center of the leg. So I hope when he stops, it will change the direction of his slide. Okay, now you can see the right and left hind. So we're gonna walk this horse off and see if we've made a difference. <laughs>